Section 10 of A General Introduction to Psychoanalysis. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A General Introduction to Psychoanalysis by Sigmund Freud. Translated by Granville Stanley Hall. Section 10 The Dream symbolism in the dream we have discovered that the distortion of dreams a disturbing element in our work of understanding them is the result of censorious activity which is directed against the unacceptable of the unconscious wish impulses but of course we have not maintained that censorship is the only factor which is to blame for the dream distortion and we may actually make the discovery in a further study of the dream that other items play a part in this result that is even if the dream censorship were eliminated we might not be in a position to understand the dreams the actual dream still might not be identical with the latent dream thought this other item which makes the dream unintelligible this new addition to dream distortion we discover by considering a gap in our technique i have already admitted that for certain elements of the dream no associations really occur to the person being analyzed this does not happen so often as the dreamers maintain in many cases the association can be forced by persistence but still there are certain instances in which no association is forthcoming or if forced does not furnish what we expected when this happens in the course of a psychoanalytic treatment then a particular meaning may be attached thereto with which we have nothing to do here it also occurs however in the interpretation of dreams of a normal person or in interpreting one's own dreams once a person is convinced that in these cases no amount of forcing of associations will avail he will finally make the discovery that the unwished for contingency occurs regularly in certain dream elements and he will begin to recognize a new order of things there where at first he believed he had come across a peculiar exception to our technique in this way we are tempted to interpret these silent dream elements ourselves to undertake their translation by the means at hand the fact that every time we trust to this substitution we obtain a satisfactory meaning is forced upon us until we resolve upon this decision the dream remains meaningless its continuity is broken the accumulation of many similar cases tends to give the necessary certainty to our first timid attempts i am expounding all this in rather a schematic manner but this is permissible for the purposes of instruction and i am not trying to misstate but only to simplify matters in this manner we derive constant translations for a whole series of dream elements just as constant translations are found in our popular dream books for all the things we dream but do not forget that in our association technique we never discover constant substitutes for the dream elements you will say at once that this road to interpretation appears far more uncertain and open to objection than the former methods of free association but a further fact is to be taken into consideration after one has gathered a sufficient number of such constant substitutes empirically he will say that of his own knowledge he should actually have denied that these items of dream interpretation could really be understood without the associations of the dreamer the facts that force us to recognize their meaning will appear in the second half of our analysis we call such a constant relationship between a dream element and its interpretation symbolic the dream element is itself a symbol of the unconscious dream thought you will remember that previously when we were investigating the relationship between dream elements and their actuality i drew three distinctions namely that of the part of the whole that of the allusion and that of the imagery i then announced that there was a fourth but did not name it the fourth is the symbolic relationship here introduced very interesting discussions centre about this and we will now consider them before we express our own particular observations on symbolism symbolism is perhaps 
the most noteworthy chapter of dream study in the first place since symbols are permanent or constant translations they realize in a certain measure the ideal of ancient as well as popular dream interpretation an ideal which by means of our technique we had left behind they permit us in a certain cases to interpret a dream without questioning the dreamer who aside from this has no explanation for the symbol if the interpreter is acquainted with the customary dream symbols and in addition with the dreamer himself the conditions under which the latter gives and the impressions he received before having the dream it is often possible to interpret a dream without further information to translate it right out of the bat such a trick flatters the interpreter and impresses the dreamer it stands out as a pleasurable incident in the usual oddest course of cross-examining the dreamer but do not be misled it is not our function to perform tricks interpretation based on a knowledge of symbols is not a technique that can replace the associative technique or even compare with it it is a supplement to the associative technique and furnishes the latter merely with transplanted usable results but as regards familiarity with the dreamer's psychic situation you must consider the fact that you are not limited to interpreting the dreams of acquaintances that as a rule you are not acquainted with the daily occurrences which act as a stimuli for the dreams and the associations of the subject furnish you with the knowledge of that very thing we call psychic situation furthermore it is very extraordinary particularly in the view of circumstances to be mentioned later that the most vehement opposition has been voiced against the existence of symbolic relationship between the dream and the unconscious even persons of judgment and position who have otherwise made great progress in psychoanalysis have discontinued their support at this point this is the more remarkable since in the first place symbolism is neither peculiar to the dream nor characteristic of it and since in the second place symbolism in the dream was not discovered through psychoanalysis although the latter is not poor otherwise in making startling discoveries the discoverer of dream symbolism if we insist on a discovery in modern times was the philosopher k a schrener 1861 psychoanalysis affirmed schrener's discovery and modified it considerably now we will want to know something of the nature of dream symbolism and to hear some examples i shall gladly impart to you what i know but i admit that our knowledge is not so complete as we could desire it to be the nature of symbol relationship is a comparison but not any desired comparison one suspects a special requisite for this comparison but is unable to say what it is not everything to which we are able to compare an object or an occurrence occurs in the dream as its symbol on the other hand the dream does not symbolize anything we may choose but only specific elements of the dream thought there are limitations on both sides it must be admitted that the idea of the symbol cannot be sharply delimited at all times it mingles with the substitution dramatization etc even approaches the allusion in one series of symbols the basic comparison is apparent to the senses on the other hand there are other symbols which raise the question of where the similarity the something intermediate of the suspected comparison is to be sought we may discover it by more careful consideration or it may remain hidden to us furthermore it is extraordinary if the symbol is a comparison that this comparison is not revealed by the association that the dreamer is not acquainted with the comparison that he makes use of it without knowing of its existence indeed the dreamer does not even care to admit the validity of this comparison when it is pointed out to him so you see a symbolic relationship is a comparison of a very special kind the origin of which is not clearly understood by us perhaps later we may find references to this unknown factor a number of things that find symbolic representation in the dream is not great the human body has a whole parents children brothers and sisters birth death 
nakedness and a few others the only typical that is regular representation of human person as a whole is in the form of a house as was recognized by schreiner who indeed wished to credit this symbol with an overwhelming significance which it does not deserve it occurs in dreams that a person now lustful now frightened climbs down the fronts of houses those with the entirely smooth walls are men but those which are provided with projections and balconies to which one can hold on are women parents appear in the dream as king and queen or other persons highly respected the dream in this instance is very pious it treats children and brothers and sisters less tenderly they are symbolized as little animals or vermin birth is almost regularly represented by some reference to water either one plunges into the water or climbs out of it or rescues someone from the water or is himself rescued from it that is there is a mother relation to the person death is replaced in the dream by taking a journey riding in a train being dead by various darksome timid suggestions nakedness by clothes and uniforms you see here how the lines between symbolic and suggestive representation merge into one another in contrast to the paucity of this enumeration it is a striking fact that the objects and subject matter of another sphere are represented by an extraordinarily rich symbolism this is the sphere of sexual life the genitals the sex processes and sexual intercourse the great majority of symbols in the dream are sex symbols a remarkable disproportion results from this fact the designated subject matters are few their symbols extraordinarily profuse so that each of the objects can be expressed by any number of symbols of almost equal value in the interpretation something is disclosed that arouses universal objection the symbol interpretations in contrast to the many sidedness of the dream representations are very monotonous this displaces all who deal with them but what is one to do since this is the first time in these lectures that we speak of the sexual life i must tell you the manner in which i intend to handle this theme psychoanalysis sees no reason for hiding matters or treating them innuendo finds no necessity of being ashamed of dealing with this important subject believes it is proper and decent to call everything by its correct name and hopes more effectively in this manner to ward off disturbing or salacious thoughts the fact that i am talking before a mixed audience can make no difference on this point just as there is no special knowledge either for the delphic oracle or for flappers so the ladies present among you have by their appearance in this lecture hall made it clear that they wish to be considered on the same basis as the men the dream has a number of representations for the male genital that may be called symbolic and in which the singularity of the comparison is for the most part very enlightening in the first place the holy figure 3 is a symbolical substitute for the male genital the more conspicuous and more interesting part of the genital to both sexes the male organ as symbolical substitute in the objects of like form those which are long and upright such as sticks umbrellas poles trees etc it is also symbolized by objects that have the characteristic in common with it of penetration into the body and consequent injury hence pointed weapons of every type knives daggers lances swords and in the same manner firearms guns pistols and the revolver which is so suitable because of its shape in the troubled dream of the young girl pursued by a man with a knife or a firearm plays a big role this probably the most frequent dream symbolism is easily translatable easily comprehensible too is the substitution of the male member of objects out of which water flows faucets water cans fountains as well as its representation by other objects that have the power of elongation such as hanging lamps collapsible pencils etc that pencils quills nail files hammers 
and other instruments are undoubtedly male symbols is a fact connected with the conception of the organ which likewise is not far to seek the extraordinary characteristic of the member of being able to raise itself against the force of gravity one of the phenomena of erection leads to symbolic representations by balloons aeroplanes and more recently zeppelins the dream has another far more expressive way of symbolizing erection it makes the sex organ the essential part of the whole person and pictures the person himself as flying do not feel disturbed because the dreams of flying often so beautiful which we all have had must be interpreted as dreams of general sexual excitement as erection dreams p ferdon among the psychoanalytical students has confirmed this interpretation beyond any doubt and even morley ward much praised for his sobriety who carried on his dream experiments with artificial positions of the arms and legs and who was really opposed to psychoanalysis perhaps knew nothing about psychoanalysis has come to the same conclusion as a result of his research it is no objection to this conclusion that women may have the same dreams of flying remember that our dream acts as wish fulfillments and that the wish to be a man is often present in women consciously or unconsciously and the fact that it is possible for a woman to realize this wish by the same sensation as a man does will not mislead any one acquainted with anatomy there is a small organ in the genitals of a woman similar to that of the male and this small organ the clitoris even in childhood and in the many years before sexual intercourse plays the same role as does the large organ of the male to the less comprehensible male sex symbols belong certain reptiles and fish notably the famous symbol of the snake why hats and cloaks should have been turned to the same use is certainly difficult to discover but their symbolic meaning leaves no room for doubt and finally the question may be raised whether possibly the substitution of some other member as the representation for the male organ may not be regarded as symbolic i believe that one is forced to this conclusion by the context and by the female counterparts the female genital is symbolically represented by all those objects which share its peculiarity of enclosing a space capable of being filled by something namely by pits caves and hollows by pitchers and bottles by boxes and trunks jars cases pockets etc the ship too belongs in this category many symbols represent the womb of the mother rather than the female genital as wardrobes stoves and primarily a room the room symbolism is related to the house symbol doors and entrances again become the symbolic of genital openings but materials too are symbols of the woman wood paper and objects that are made of these materials such as tables and books of animals at least the snail and muscle are unmistakably recognizable as symbols for the female of parts of the body the mouth takes the place of the genital opening while churches and chapels are structural symbolisms as you see all of these symbols are not equally comprehensible the breasts must be included in the genitals and like the larger hemispheres of the female body are represented by apples peaches and fruits in general the pubic hair growth of both sexes appears in the dream as woods and bushes the complicated topography of the female genitals accounts for the fact that they are often represented as the scenes with cliffs woods and water while the imposing mechanism of the male sex apparatus leads to the use of all manner of very complicated machinery difficult to describe a noteworthy symbol of the female genital is also the jewel casket jewels and treasure are also representatives of the beloved person in the dream sweets frequently occur as representatives of sexual delights the satisfaction in one's own genital is suggested by the types of play in which may be included piano playing exquisite symbolic representations of onanism are sliding and coasting as well as tearing off a branch a particularly remarkable dream symbol is that of having one's teeth fall out or having them pulled 
certainly its most immediate interpretation is the castration as a punishment for onanism special representations for the relations of the sexes are less numerous in the dream than we might have expected from the foregoing rhythmic activities such as dancing riding and climbing may be mentioned also harrowing experiences such as being run over one may include certain manual activities and of course being threatened with weapons you must not imagine that either the use or translation of these symbols is entirely simple all manner of unexpected things are continually happening for example it seems hardly believable that in these symbolic representations the sex differences are not always sharply distinguished many symbols represent a genital in general regardless of whether male or female example the little child the small son or daughter it sometimes occurs that a predominantly male symbol is used for a female genital or vice versa this is not understood until one has acquired an insight into the development of the sexual representations of mankind in many instances this double meaning of symbols may be only apparent the most striking of the symbols such as weapons pockets and boxes are excluded from this bisexual usage i should now like to give a summary from the point of view of the symbols rather than of the thing represented of the field out of which the sex symbols are for the most part taken and then to make a few remarks about the symbols which have the points in common that are not understood an obscure symbol of this type is the hat perhaps headdress on the whole and is usually employed as a male representation though at times as a female in the same way a cloak represents a man perhaps not always the genital aspect you are at liberty to ask why the cravat which is suspended and is not worn by the women is an unmistakable male symbol white laundry or linen in fact is female dresses uniforms are as we have already seen substitutes for nakedness for body formation the shoe or slipper is a female genital tables and wood have already been mentioned as the puzzling but undoubtedly female symbols ladders ascents steps in relation to their mounting are certain symbols of sexual intercourse on closer consideration we see that they have the rhythm of walking as a common characteristic perhaps too the heightening of excitement and the shortening of the breath the higher one mounts we have already spoken of natural scenery as a representation of the female genitals mountains and cliffs are symbols of the male organ the garden is a frequent symbol of the female genitals fruit does not stand for the child but for the breasts wild animals signify sensually aroused persons or further base impulses passions blossoms and flowers represent the female genitals or more particularly virginity do not forget that the blossoms are really the genitals of the plants we already know the room as a symbol the representation may be extended in that the windows entrances and exits of the room take on the meaning of the body openings whether the room is open or closed is a part of this symbolism and the key that opens it is an unmistakable male symbol this is the material of dream symbolism it is not complete and might not be deep and as well as extended but i am of the opinion it will seem more than enough to you perhaps will make you reluctant you will ask do i really live in the midst of sex symbols are all the objects that surround me all the clothes that i put on all the things that i touch always sex symbols and nothing else there really are sufficient grounds for such questions and the first is where in fact are we to find the meaning of these dream symbols if the dreamer himself can give no information concerning them or at best can give only incomplete information my answer is from many widely different sources from fairy tales and myths jokes and farces from folk folk that is the knowledge of the customs usages 
sayings and songs of people from the poetic and vulgar language everywhere we find the same symbolism and in many of these instances we understand them without further information if we follow up each of these sources separately we shall find so many parallels to the dream symbolism that we must believe in the correctness of our interpretations the human body we have said is according to schroener frequently symbolized in the dream by the house continuing this representation the windows doors and entrances are the entrances to the body cavities the facades are smooth or provided with balconies and projections to which to hold the same symbolism is to be found in our daily speech when we greet a good friend as hold house or when we say someone we will hit him in the belfry or maintain of another that he is not quite right in the upper story in anatomy the body openings are sometimes called body portals the fact that we meet our parents in the dream as imperial or royal persons is at first surprising but it has its parallel in the fairy tale doesn't it begin to dawn upon us that many of the fairy tales which begin once upon a time there was a king and a queen intended nothing else than once there was a father and a mother in our families we refer to our children as princes the eldest as the crown prince the king usually calls himself the father of the country we playfully designate little children as worms and say sympathetically poor little worm let us read into the symbolism of the house when we use the projections of the house to hold ourselves on to it in the dream are we not reminded of the familiar colloquialism about persons with well developed breasts she has something to hold on to the folk expresses this in still another way when it says there is lot of wood in the front of our house as though it wished to come out to the aid of our interpretation that wood is a feminine maternal symbol in addition to wood there are others we might not understand how this material has come to be a substitute for the maternal the feminine here our comparison of languages may be helpful the german word hals wood is said to be of the same stem as the greek word ly which means stuff raw material there is an example of the case not entirely unusual where a general word for material finally is exclusively used for some special material there is an island in the ocean known by the name madeira the portuguese gave it this name at the time of its discovery because it was at that time entirely covered with forests for in the language of the portuguese madeira means wood you will recognize however that madeira is nothing else than slightly changed latin word materia which again has the general meaning of material material is derived from mater mother the material out of which something is made is at the same time its mother part in the symbolic use of wood for woman mother this ancient conception still lives birth is regularly expressed in dreams by the connection with water one plunges into the water or comes out of the water which means one gives birth to or is born now let us not forget that this symbol may refer in two ways to the truths of the evolutionary history not alone have all land mammals including the ancestors of man developed out of water animals this is the ultimate fact but every single mammal every human being lived the first part of his existence in the water namely lived in the body of his mother as an embryo in the amniotic fluid and came out of the water at the time of his birth i do not wish to maintain that the dreamer knows this on the contrary i hold that he does not have to know the dreamer very likely knows some things because of the fact that he was told about them in his childhood and for that very reason i maintain that this knowledge has played no part in the construction of his symbols he was told in the childhood that the stork bought him but where did it get him out of a lake out of the well again out of the water one of my patients to whom such information had been given a little count 
disappeared for a whole afternoon finally he discovered lying at the edge of the palace lake his little face bent above the water and earnestly peering into it to see if he could see the little children at the bottom in the midst of the birth of the hero which orang substituted to comparative examination the oldest is that of the king sargon of agade about 2800 bc exposure in the water and rescue from the water play a predominating role rank has recognized that these are representations of birth analogous to those customary in dreams when a person in his dream rescues another from the water the latter becomes his mother or just plainly mother in the myth a person who rescues a child out of the water professes herself as the real mother of the child in a well known joke the intelligent jewish boy is asked who was the mother of moses he answered without hesitation the princess but no he is told she only took him out of the water that's what she says is his reply and thereby he shows that he has found the correct interpretation of the myth leaving on a trip represents death in the dream likewise it is the custom in the nursery when a child asks where someone who has died and whom he misses may be to say to him the absent one has taken a trip again i should like to deny the truth of the belief that the dream symbol originates in this evasion used for the benefit of children the poet makes use of the same symbol when he speaks of the hereafter as that undiscovered bourne from which no traveller returns even in everyday speech it is customary to refer to the last journey every person acquainted with the ancient rite knows how seriously for example the egyptians considered the portrayal of a journey to the land of the dead there still exist many copies of the death book which was given to the mummy for this journey as a sort of baedeker since the burial places have been separated from the living quarters the last journey of the dead person has become a reality in the same manner the genital symbolism is just as little peculiar to the dream alone every one of you has perhaps at some time or other been so unkind as to call some old woman an old casket without perhaps being aware that he was using a genital symbol in the new testament one may read woman is a weak vessel the holy scripture of the jews so nearly poetic in their style are filled with sex symbolic expressions which have not been always correctly understood and the true construction of which in the song of the songs for example has led to many misunderstandings in the later hebraic literature the representation of a woman as the house the door taking the place of the sex opening is very widespread the man complains for instance when he discovers a lack of virginity that he has found the door open the symbol of the table for a woman is also known in this literature the woman says to her husband i set the table for him but he upset it lame children are supposed to result from the fact that the man has overturned the table i take these examples from the work of l levy of brun the sexual symbolism of the bible and the talmud that ships too represent women in dreams is the belief derived from the etymologists who maintain ship was originally the name of an earthen vessel and is the same word as shaf to create the greek myth of periander of corinth and his wife melissa is proof that the stow or oven is a woman and a womb when according to herodotus the tyrant entreated the shade of his beloved wife whom however he murdered in a fit of jealousy for some sign of its identity the deceased identified herself by the reminder that he periander had thrust his bread into a cold oven as a disguise for an occurrence that could have been best known to no other person in the anthropophagia published by f s cross an indispensable source book for everything that has to do with the sex life of nations we read that in certain german region it is commonly said of a woman 
who has just been delivered of a child her oven has caved in the making of a fire and everything connected therewith is filled through and through with sex symbolism the flame is always the male genital the fireplace the hearth is the womb of the woman if you have often wondered why is it that landscapes are so often used to represent the female genitals in the dream then let the mythologists teach you the role mother earth has played in the symbolisms and cults of ancient times you may be tempted to say that a room represents a woman in the dream because of the german colloquialism which uses the term frauenzimmer instead of frau in other words it substitutes for the human person the idea of that room that is set aside for her exclusive use in like manner we speak of sublime porte and mean the sultan and his government furthermore the name of the ancient egyptian ruler pharaoh means nothing other than great court room in the ancient orient the courtyards between the double gates of the town were the gathering places of the people in the same manner as the market place was in the classical world what i mean is this deviation is far too superficial it seems more probable to me that the room has the space surrounding a man came to be the symbol of a woman we have seen that the house is used in such a representation from mythology and poetry we may take the city fortress palace citadel as further symbols of woman the question may easily be decided by the dreams of those persons who do not speak german and do not understand it in the last years my patients have been predominantly foreign language speaking and i think i can recall that in their dreams as well the room represents woman even where they had no analogous usage in their languages there are still other signs which show the symbolization is not limited by the bounds of language a fact that even the old dream investigator schubert one thousand eight hundred and sixty two maintained since none of my dreamers were totally ignorant of german i must leave this differentiation to those psychoanalysts who can gather examples in other lands where the people speak but one language among the symbol representations of the male genital there is scarcely one that does not recur in jokes or in vulgar or poetical usage especially among the old classical poets not alone do those symbols commonly met within dreams appealed here but also new ones example the working materials of various performances foremost of which is the incantation furthermore we approach in this symbolic representation of the male a very extended and much more discussed province which we shall avoid for economic reasons i should like to make a few remarks however about one of the unclassified symbols the figure three whether or not this figure derives its holiness from its symbolic meaning may remain undecided but it appears certain that many objects which occur in nature as three-part things derive their use as coat of arms and emblems from which symbolic meaning example the clover likewise the three-part french lily fleur de is and the extraordinary coat of arms of two such wildly separated islands as sicily and the isle of man where the triskelis three partly bended knees emerging from a central point are merely said to have portrayal in a different form of male genitals copies of the male member were used in the antiquity as the most powerful charms up to Ropea, against evil influences and this is connected with the fact that the lucky armlets of our own time may one and all be recognized as a genital or sex symbols let us study such a collection worn in the form of little silver pendants the four-leaf clover a pig a mushroom a horseshoe a ladder a chimney sweep the four-leaf clover it seems has accepted the place of the three-leaf clover which is really more suitable as a symbol the pig is an ancient symbol of fertility the mushroom is an unquestionable penis symbol there are mushrooms that derive their systematic names from the unmistakable similarity to the male member phallus impudicus the horseshoe recalls the contour of the female genital opening 
and the chimney sweep who carries a ladder belongs in this company because he carries on that trade with which sex intercourse is vulgarly compared compare the anthropophagia we have already become acquainted with this ladder as a sex symbol in the dream the german usage is helpful here it shows us how the verb to mount is made use of in an exquisite sexual sense we use the expression to run after women which literally translated would be to climb after women and an old climber in french where step is la marche we find that the analogous expression for a man about town is a vieux marche it is apparently not unknown in this connection that a sexual intercourse of many of the larger animals requires a mounting a climbing upon the female the tearing off of a branch as a symbolic representation of onanism is not alone in keeping the vulgar representation of the fact of onanism but as far-reaching mythological parallels especially noteworthy however is the representation of onanism or rather the punishment therefore castration by the falling out or pulling out of teeth because there is a parallel in folklore which is probably known to the fewest dreamers it does not seem at all questionable to me that the practice of circumcision common among so many peoples is an equivalent and a substitute for castration and now we have informed that in australia certain primitive tribes practice circumcision as a rite of puberty the ceremony in honor of the boys coming of age while others living quite near have substituted for this act the striking out of a tooth i end my exposition with these examples they are only examples we know more about these matters and you may well imagine how much richer and how much more interesting such a collection would appear if made not by amateurs like ourselves but by real experts in mythology anthropology philology and folklore we are compelled to draw a few conclusions which cannot be exhaustive but which give us much food for thought in the first place we are faced by the fact that the dreamer has at his disposal a symbolic means of expression of which he is unconscious while awake and does not recognize when he sees this is as remarkable as if you should make the discovery that your chambermaid understands sanskrit although you know she was born in a bohemian village and never learned the language it is not easy to harmonize this fact with our psychological views we can only say that the dreamer's knowledge of symbolism is unconscious that is it is a part of his unconscious mental life we make no progress with this assumption until now it was only necessary to admit of unconscious impulses those about which one knew nothing either for a period of time or at all times but now we deal with something more indeed with unknown knowledge with thought relationships comparisons between unlike objects which lead to this that one constant may be substituted for another these comparisons are not made anew each time but they lie ready they are complete for all time that is to be concluded from the fact of their agreement in different persons agreement despite differences in language but whence comes the knowledge of these symbol relationships the usages of language cover only a small part of them the dreamer is for the most part unacquainted with the numerous parallels from other sources we ourselves must first laboriously gather them together secondly these symbolic representations are peculiar neither to the dreamer nor to the dream work by the means of which they become expressed we have learned that mythology and fairy tales make use of the same symbolism as well as to the people in their sayings and songs the ordinary language of every day and poetic fantasy the field of symbolism is an extraordinarily large one and dream symbolism is but a small part thereof it is not even expedient to approach the whole problem from the dream side many of the symbols that are used in other places do not occur in the dream at all or at best only very seldom many of the dream symbols are to be found in other fields only very rarely as you have seen 
one gets the impression that he is here confronted with an ancient but no longer existent method of expression of which various phrases however continue in different fields one year one there a third perhaps in a slightly altered form in several fields i am reminded of the fantasy of an interesting mental defective who had imagined a fundamental language of which all these symbolic representations were the remains thirdly you must have noticed that symbolism in these other fields is by no means sex symbolism solely while in the dream the symbols are used almost entirely to express sexual objects and processes nor is this easily explained is it possible that symbols originally sexual in their meaning later come to have other uses and that this was the reason perhaps for the weakening of the symbolic representation to one of another nature these questions are admittedly unanswerable if one has dealt only with dream symbolism one can only adhere to the supposition that there is an especially intimate connection between true symbols and things sexual an important indication of this has been given us recently a philologist h sperber upsala who works independently of psychoanalysis advances the theory that sexual needs have played the largest part in the origin and development of languages the first sounds served as the means of communication and called the sexual partner the further development of the roots of the speech accompanied the performance of the primitive man's work this work was communal and progressed to the accompaniment of rhythmically repeated word sounds in that way a sexual interest was transferred to the work the primitive man made work acceptable at the same time that he used it as an equivalent and substitute for sex activity the word thus called forth by the common labor had two meanings designated the sex act as well as the equivalent labor activity in time the word became disassociated from its sexual significance and became fixed on this work generations later the same thing happened to a new word that at once had sexual significance and came to be used for a new type of work in this manner a number of word roots were formed all of sexual origin and all of which had lost their sexual significance if the description sketched here approximates the truth it opens up the possibility of an understanding of the dream symbolism we can understand how it is that in the dream which preserves something of these most ancient conditions there are so extraordinarily many symbols for the sexual and why in general weapons and implements always stand for male materials and things manufactured for the female symbolic relationships should be the remnants of the old word identity things that were once called by the same names as the genitals can now appear in the dream as symbols for them from our parallels to dream symbolization you may also learn to appreciate what is the character of psychoanalysis which makes it a subject of general interest which is true of neither psychology nor psychiatry psychoanalytic work connects with so many other scientific subjects the investigation of which promises the most pertinent discoveries with mythology with folklore with racial psychology and with religion you will understand how a journal can have grown on psychoanalytic soil the sole purpose of which is the furtherance of these relationships this is the imago founded in 1912 and edited by hans sachs and otto rank in all these relations psychoanalysis is first and foremost the giving less often the receiving part indeed it derives its benefit from the fact that its unusual teachings are substantiated by either recurrence in other fields but on the whole it is psychoanalysis that provides the technical procedure and the point of view the use of which will prove fruitful in other fields the psychic life of the human individual provides us upon psychoanalytic investigation with explanations with which we are able to solve many riddles in the life of humanity or at least show these riddles 
in their proper light. Furthermore, I have not even told you under what conditions we are able to get deepest insight into all that supposititious fundamental language or from which field we gain the most information. So long as you do not know this, you cannot appreciate the entire significance of the subject. This field is the neurotic, its materials, the symptoms and other expressions of the nervous patient, for the explanation and treatment which psychoanalysis was devised. My fourth point of view returns to our premise and connects up with our prescribed course. We said, even if there were no such thing as dream censorship, the dream would still be hard to understand, for we could then be confronted with the task of translating the symbol language of the dream into the thought of our waking hours. Symbolism is a second and independent item of dream distortion in addition to dream censorship. It is not a far cry to suppose that it is convenient for the dream censorship to make use of symbolism, since both lead to the same end, to making the dream strange and incomprehensible. Whether or not in the further study of dream, we shall hit upon a new item that influences dream distortion remains open to be seen. I should not like to leave the subject of dream symbolism without once more touching upon the curious fact that it arouses such strong opposition in the case of educated persons, in spite of the fact that symbolism in myth, religion, art and speech is undoubtedly so prevalent. Is not this again because of its relationship to sexuality? End of section 10 Recording by Lambda